Q Music. We're all about class when it comes to pens, and we like to let it show. Welcome to Fountain Pen Radio, presented by FBGeeks.com. And now for your fountain pen enthusiast hosts, here's Eric and Dan. Gentlemen. This is Fountain Pen Geeks podcast, episode number 33 for Tuesday, July 17th, 2012. We are recording live on Saturday, July 14th. Welcome to Fountain Pen Radio. My name is Eric. And I'm Dan. Dan. how are you today? I'm fantastic. How are you, sir? Well, happy Saturday to you. And happy Sunday to every happy, happy Sunday to everybody who's listening on the other side of that dateline. Who have we got with us? I can't remember. <laughs> um, we have Mr. Stephen Mr. Brown. Stephen How are Brown. you, Stephen? Can you hear us, Stephen? I can hear you. Yes. You can hear us. And I. Uh, are you there? I am there. I just got a lot of feedback from Eric. No, that's Dan. Whatever you just did, Dan. Oh. Can you stop it? Thank you. <laughs> what Sorry. Was that? Are, you, are you at an airport? It sounded like a jet. I had changed some <laughs> settings on my mixer last night while I was doing a recording, and I tried to change them back, but I guess I'll, I just won't touch it now. Sorry. Yeah, we still got... Well, okay, it's better now. Yeah, that was like okay. a big fan. Am I guessing oh. correctly or not? I've I've got a fan in the oh, okay. background. Whatever here. you changed picked up that fan in the background quite nicely. We were talking oh. to Stephen Brown. Stephen, how are you today? Yes, I'm doing just fine. Thank you. How Great. are you? How's everything uh, in your neck of the woods? Well, uh, we we have had a lot of rain the past few days. It's been just pouring for multiple hours a day, uh, and since the Netherlands is actually below what but below sea level for a large part, I. I uh, there, there weren't any floodings or anything, but I, I thought we should take some precautions. So I hereby declare that if we get flooded and you never see me again, Dan, you get my Mont Blanc 149, <laughs> my 146, both my Viscontis and my Yard Lead, and Eric, you will get my Caveco Sport. Um, <laughs> it, it's not entirely, you know, evenly distributed, but that's the only pen I have that doesn't have a clip. So, uh, okay. you, know, so you put some thought out. into it. Yes. Well, it was nice having you with us today, Doc. <laughs> yes, well, okay, bye. Um, now, wait, wait, how are those pens going to get in the mail? Well, no, you have to go pick them up, Dad. Oh. <laughs> yes, you'll right. have to take I suppose I can make a trip for that. <laughs> take a boat. Uh, before we get started with the show, I have to talk about something. Um, Dan, you know this about me, don't you? I love to be proven wrong, don't I? Yeah, you just agree with me. Yeah, I, I, I think like it. You just like to be right but, is what the problem is. <laughs> No, no, actually, I do like to be proven wrong um, because it makes me, well, I don't know, it, it lets me know that I don't actually have a closed mind if somebody can actually prove me wrong. But sometimes you're just proven wrong so well, as in last week's show. Do you remember, Dan, that I, you were talking about a pen that was larger than the Mont Blanc 149, and I said, How could I forget? I, well, yeah, you, you didn't correct me on, on the air either, <laughs> did you? Uh, I was under the impression, and I have been for quite some time, that the Mont Blanc 149 got its name because it's 149 millimeters long. And I mentioned that on the show, and we all said, oh, yeah, blah, blah, and we kind of, you know, glossed over it and went our merry ways. And then the podcast was published on YouTube, and then, well, actually, that was the video podcast, and then the podcast was published in audio format. And then finally, I get, was there a comment? I think it was an, a, a YouTube comment from our very own Doc Brown saying, Eric, are you sure the 149 is 149 millimeters? Because mine is nowhere near that long. And for the first time, I measured my 149, and it is nowhere near 149. And I should have known this. I should have known this. I read this what, somewhere. What it measure at? Uh, something below uh, one, over 140 and less than 149. I don't remember if it was 142 or 144 or 146 or something like that. The length has nothing to do with the numbering system in Mont Blanc, and I knew that from other pens. But somehow, years ago, I had read that the 149 got its name because of its length, and it just stuck in my head. And I, I said it on the air, and who knows how many other people I've said it to, and I'm just, you know, spreading that rumor. And finally, Doc Brown shows up and says, hey, Measure your pen, because if your pen, if your 149 is longer than, is 149, it's like the only one on the planet. So sure enough, 149s did not get their name from being 149 millimeters long. So thank you, Doc Brown, for showing me the light. Well, 
You know, that's interesting because I went to nibs.com because they have a, a nifty little, um, you know, information chart about pens. And it says the Mont Blanc 149 is 5.875 inches long, which is 149 millimeters. We bring that to their attention because it isn't 149 millimeters. And the numbering uh-huh. system doesn't have anything to do with the length. I've got a 264, and it's certainly not 264 millimeters long. <laughs> I got a but. ruler right here. I'm going to measure it right now because now I want to know. Um, my, yeah, I'm sorry. My my Mont Blanc is from the the tip of the well blind cap uh, to the tip of the nib. It's about 13 centimeters and, and two millimeters, something like that. So we that's want it with the, we want really it with the not. Cap I mean, it. if it would be 149, it would be this Me- long. Measure so it. Measure it with the cap on closed. Yeah, I think I did that too. You don't like, know where I'll, your cap I'll do it again is. just to prove the if He's I can find the cap. cap because I just cleaned it. Uh, cap. Oh, there it is. 149 here. I just don't have my calipers. Okay, there we have the cap. The cap. And now capped, it is still not 149. It's uh, about 146, 47, okay. but really not 149. No, That's interesting. Sorry. So, I just wanted to mention that, and I want to I, I, I want to make sure that nobody goes away thinking that the Mont Blanc 149 is 149 millimeters long. And I guess I'm going to have a look after the show. I'll have a look at nibs.com. Make sure maybe that's where I read it. I don't really remember where I read it, but somewhere I read it was 149, oh. and that's how it got its name. And boy, did that click in my mind because it just made so much sense. Yeah, but it makes sense. It it sounds like it like it makes sense. So I, I can really you know I I, I could believe that. Uh, it's yeah, just that I thought I don't think it's that big, but good okay. for you. So someone in chat just asked us, then why is it called the 149? And and Stephen, you had a really good answer for that. Do you remember it off the top uh, of your head? Yeah, of course I do. I'm a fountain pen geek. <laughs> uh, I, I uh, now if if I understand correctly, now the, the thing is I can't remember where I got this, uh, but I I remember that the. The, there are three numbers. The first number indicates the, uh, the the line of the pen. So the one, the 100 range, is the Meisterstück range, so the, the top range. And the second number indicates the, if I remember correctly, the filling mechanism. And I think the four uh, refers to that telescopic uh, filling mechanism that's that's uh, present in the uh, the Meisterstück pens. Uh, and then the final number refers to the nib. Now I think that would indicate that it's a number nine nib does that even exist? Because that sounds like it's huge. Then again, the nib on the 149 is very large. Maybe it's an internal Mont Blanc system. I don't know. What I do know is that the, the Mont Blanc 146 shares pretty much everything with the 149 except for the nib. So that could explain the the, the final number. It's the only one, the only number that actually is different. Um, so I think that was it. And actually, as soon as I read your comment, I, I recognized that. And I think I saw that in an article by um, uh, Barry Gabay, I think his name is. Anyway, he's, he's a, a very well-known Mont Blanc collector. He's done a lot of articles on Mont Blancs, and especially the 149, comparing all of them across you know the different variations. So um, I, I recognize that as well. I just... Didn't even think of it when we were on the show last week. Yep, never even crossed my mind. And I have, I have like a 264, and I know what that means. Uh, but for one, for whatever reason, I wanted the 149 to be 149 millimeters because that was just easy to remember. That's just easy. To remember. <laughs> but anyways, I will try and find that article actually because if it doesn't include that, it does include a lot of other very cool information on the 149. And if I find it, we'll definitely have it in the sh- show notes. Moving on, cool. but I, I do want to say thank you, Doc Brown. Thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll be, we'll yeah, be sure, sure to have you back again real soon. Let's talk about pen shows. Yeah, absolutely. We got one coming up real soon. July 20th through the 22nd is the Miami Pen Show. Check it out at MiamiPenShow.com. We've got uh, prices and everything now. A one-day pass is only 10 bucks. Two-day pass is $15. And a three-day pass is $25. Um, now that seems pretty reasonable, reasonable to me because, Eric, do you remember what we paid for the L.A. pin show? Uh, it was, uh, I was going to say $45, but it might have, it might yeah, have been 65 like that. Uh, But that was for the, the, oh. the you know, four-day pass to get in right. all the days. So this definitely sounds like a good deal. Um, 
they're going to have several speakers there. Uh, Deborah Basil will be holding a calligraphy class, and Roger Cromwell and Susan Worth will also each be speaking. And they're going to have a couple pin drawings to give away. And the really cool thing is you don't need to be present to win. I love that. And then the big show coming up is the DC Super Show, August 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. And we will have more details on that as it approaches. I'm going to be there, by the way, just in case nobody knew that. How about you, Doc Brown? Are you going to be there? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm going to be there. I think everyone should be there, right? I mean, I heard someone about some person not being ah, that's there. A but it's, uh, that's a rumor. That's a rumor. Dan, are you going to be there? Oh, he's hiding. <laughs> <laughs> no. Dan's not going to uh, be there. Sorry, guys. I, I so desperately want to, but... I'm just not going to be able to make it. Well, we will miss you. Isn't this going to be the time for the for the first ever Fountain Pen Geeks raffle? Like, get Dan to DC. <laughs> and then everyone just sort of... Doc Brown, you are going way off script. <laughs> We're going to start sending money, and I'm not going to know what to do with it. <laughs> A poll question. We've had the same poll question for two weeks. We liked it so much, we just left it there. But Doc Brown to the rescue. He's come up with a new question that we'll probably put in place. Doc, what's your question? Uh, well, I, actually, I'm, I'm interested. I, I was um, sort of chatting with someone uh, via YouTube uh, about uh, actually not someone. It was it was Brian Goulet who who, uh, who just posted a video on on nib grinds, and I thought it would be kind of cool to to get into get to know a bit better what what people's favorite nib grind is so what what kind of nib do you prefer fine medium broad maybe double broad or, or italic oblique etc something like that i think that would be would be interesting to know actually what people prefer i have different preferences depending on what i'm doing so i suppose the question will have to be something like if you could have only one nib for the rest of your life dan yeah um you don't have to give the answer do you like the question? Flex. Flex. <laughs> flex. Custom flex. Custom flex. That's yes. a grind. So Greg Mnuchin does it. can do anything it. and everything. It can do it all. All right. Well, well, we'll get that at the website this weekend, and then people will just flock to the poll and give us their answer. Dan, Sounds what you good. got going at yes. SP Geeks? We've got a lot of good stuff this week. I'm really excited. Um, we finally got full details about the Pelican uh, Mackier auction and you know the, the all the individual unique pins so first up ooh wow look at that cool hey, slider hey, hey, there just read <laughs> oh, sorry sorry i got distracted <laughs> so to clarify the information we posted a couple weeks ago there's going to be 12 auctions 11 individual pins and then one is a set of four pins previously i thought that set of four were books um but that's incorrect i think it was, it was a little error in translation there and the, the theme for each pin has never been used on a Pelican Mackie pin before, and it's never going to be used in the future. These are one-time, you know, special themes for these pins. And we had kind of speculated that they might be based on the M1000 or the M800. We didn't really know. It turns out it's going to be a combination of the two. Some pins are based on the M800 and some are based on the M1000. They will all feature an 18 karat gold nib in medium only. And anyone can register for the auction. You just got to go to their website and sign up, put your details in there. It's very easy. And then once the auction starts, the bidding increment will go up in increments of 50 euros. Um, so it's a little bit of a step there. But then you got to consider what these pins are selling for. The cheapest pin on the list starts at $2,600. Okay, that's the minimum bid. The most expensive one starts at $19,000. And if you've seen pictures of these, you can kind of understand why. There's a lot of detail. I mean, they're, they're beautiful. My goodness, I would love to have one. I was, I was drooling over these as I was uh, writing the article. And the, the Ocean Mystery, the orange one, has to be my favorite. I love that pen. What about you guys? Doc Brown. Yeah, I, I love that too. I mean, I, 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 th I think some of you know that I, I collected samurai swords for a while, so there's also one called the Samurai, uh, which actually has a, a very nice bit of artwork of a, an archer, I think, on a horse on there, mm -hmm. which looks very, very nice. But for me, the, 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 the one Dan just mentioned, the, the ocean mystery, 
It's just beautiful. It's orange, it's not too bright, but it's not too dull. It has fantastic artwork of, of shells, of, of I, I think, uh, I don't know what that is, a jellyfish-like object. But in any case, some, some coral, a crab, I think it's, it's absolutely stunning. It's really amazing. Well, luckily, we won't be bidding on this pen, right, gentlemen? Because I, if I had to choose exactly. a favorite, it would also be the Ocean Mystery. Not that I like any of these pens. It's, none of them just scream at me and say, buy me, buy me, buy me, sell your house and get me. None of them do that for me. Uh, <laughs> what was that uh, Pelican uh, moon, Moonlight or something, Dan? Remember the one that wasn't released in the United States? It was for the Asian market and had the rodden strips... Oh, yes. That, that was a pen I could have really liked and wanted, uh, but... Well, you know, now this is just kind of a pilot program, so if it does well, Pelican will probably do this again. I imagine it's going to do very, very well. The pens are beautiful. Uh, they just, none I of them it. speak to me on a personal level, but I can see that they are absolutely stunning pens. I w wouldn't yeah. it be nice to see them in real life? Where are these pens? Um... Right now, I imagine they're probably in Germany, in a vault. In a vault. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'm actually going to miss the auction completely, and it doesn't hurt my feelings in any way. Yeah, I'm, it, it's really cool to see a company do something like this. I'm, I'm going to be very interested to see what these pins actually sell for. I suppose we'll get that information? It's a public auction, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, you, got, you can definitely watch it. Um, what they're going to do is each auction will last a week, and a new auction will start every day. So there will be several auctions going on at one time. Oh, cool. But, uh, yeah, it'll be cool. We'll definitely try and uh, keep you guys updated about what these pens sell for. So they're for. not going to do the auction at the DC Pen Show? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, what else we got there? Well, um, you guys like I ink? I like ink. I love, I love yep. ink. We have a new ink company, Organic Studio. Um, it's, it was started by... Tyler Thompson. He's a biochemistry major and the company's based out of Maryland. And currently they're only making one product and that's inks, but they're going to, they say they're going to expand into kind of general consumer products. Their line of organic inks and, and their name, Organic Studio, is actually a play on organic chemistry. They, they're not, a, you know, they don't have anything to do with organic natural products or anything like that. Um, their ink line is called the Element line and they currently have 10 colors. And they're going to be releasing more, and they're actually releasing a new color at the DC Super Show. So you guys will have to uh, re report on that and see what it's like. Do we know what the color is, and or do they just say it's a new color? Okay. No, they haven't uh, announced it yet, but they said they're going to. So um, we, I actually have all 10 colors here. Uh, we did a little swab sample, and, and we posted that at the website. So definitely check them out. We are going to be doing or I'm going to be adding these to the encyclopedia that we'll get to a little bit later. I'm actually very impressed with the colors. I, I love the colors. They're, they're bright. They're fun. Um, from, what, from the quick reviews I've read so far, they don't seem to be very water resistant. So just kind of keep that in mind. And, and we're going to do all kinds of tests as well to, to see how well they stand up. But uh, I'm actually very impressed with, with these first batch of inks. Isn't that one of their uh, selling points, perhaps, at their website? That they're, everything in the bottle is water-based? Um, I don't know. It I could think be. that, you know, is... is I, for me, that's a selling point. It's, I don't usually stand in the shower with something that I've written uh, with a fountain pen. Um, you know, I, I like it to be easy, easily cleaned from a pen. That's really more important for me. Or, or easily cleaned from my shirt, <laughs> depending on the situation. Yeah, um. Uh, do we know what they mean by consumer products? I don't. Okay. Um, I'm guessing if he sees, you know, an area, a gap that needs to be filled, he's just going to try and yeah, create that's, that that's product. That's a pretty big universe, consumer products. Yeah, yeah, definitely, you know, a broad category <laughs> there. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what he comes up with. And uh, I'm definitely interested to, to see what inks he has on the way. Yeah, well, well, we'll report back to you from the DC Pen Show. Doc Brown, you've been very quiet on this subject. You don't like ink? Yeah, I, no, I, I was... No, no, I, uh, no, I hate ink. I absolutely... <laughs> now, it's... Uh, uh, I, I was wondering, I think... I, actually, I was trying to remember, because I think Jair Bain actually only uses natural products in the inks. 
at least when it comes to the, the, the dyes that they use. I think they're all sort of natural. So I was wondering, is this organics company doing the same thing? Would that all be, be like really not... I mean, I mean what's, nat- what's, what's a chemical then? I mean, if it's organic chemistry, then it should all be carbon-based stuff, right? I think that's what organic chemistry is about. So I was just wondering. I was just having a, a train of... of oh, you were thoughts, somewhere so. else is what you're saying. <laughs> um, uh, yes. Now, Dan, are the organics uh, more saturated than the Jayer bondings, would you say? Well, there's so many Jayer bound that I haven't tested. Um, initially, I would say yes. Okay. Uh, but I, I haven't done a you know a side to side comparison, so I, I can't say for certain. And now the the ten thousand dollar question: What do you think of the bottles, Dan? Because you've actually <laughs> opened one. I, uh, I didn't even get to that point. I just sent them to you. Yeah, I don't want these. Well, so what we got were the hundred and ten milliliter special edition bottles. The normal uh, was it fifty or fifty five milliliter bottles that are now available. Y- you know. I'm I'm not crazy about them. I I don't like the look of them. There, there's nothing special about them for sure, but at the same time, they have a very wide mouth. They're deep. It's it's easy to get pens in there. Um, they they seem solid. They seem stable. I'm not afraid. I'm gonna uh, you know knock it over. I'm not gonna have trouble getting a, a big giant pen into it. You know. So there's there's pros and cons t- to both sides, but uh. Ideally, I would like to see something a little more unique with a, uh, a little, you know, different design on the label. But, uh, you know, it's, it's th- their first run, their first line of inks. I- I'm not going to complain too loudly. Good. And you like the inks. That's probably the most important I, I part do. is whether or not you like the inks and you like the inks. Uh, were the bottles full to the brim? No, they, they were not noodlers filled. Okay. Um, there, there was a little gap. So, I mean, you could, you could easily, you know, dunk a whole pen in there and it wouldn't overflow. We'll just take a little time out here. Talk amongst yourselves. Did, did Doc Brown disappear? Did, yes. What do you do? Go get dinner or something? <laughs> Dessert? You better bring back a couple of beers. But, um, yeah, I've, I've currently got four of the inks in some of my pens right now. Um, the, the neon orange is one of my favorite. It's, it's a very bright orange. Uh, the mercury red is nice. It's, it's kind of a, a deep red color. The the carbon black, the, the name, I, I don't know. When I think of carbon black, I think of like black hole kind of black. And that's not what it is at all. I mean, it's got kind of a, a charcoal black. Yeah, I was it. expecting something darker too than what I see in the pictures. And I guess that right. added to my question about uh, saturation. Saturation. Yeah, you know, if it, it depends what you're looking for, because sometimes I don't necessarily want a a super black ink, and and you know, if you're looking for kind of that charcoal black, charcoal gray, this would be a great ink to have. It, all the inks that I've tested so far, they flow very well. Um, I've not had any problems with skipping or or the nib drying out if it sits in the open for a little bit. Um, the the other ink I really like is the uranium green. It's it's a man. It's a bright green. It uh, it is actually probably a good replacement for Levenger Always Greener. That's one of my favorite green inks, and I I have a bottle of it. They no longer make it, but uh, I have a bottle of it, and I very rarely use it because it's my favorite green. And this actually could be a, a good replacement Wonderful. for it. You've done a great job of keeping us. <laughs> Keeping us entertained with regard to ink. I have, apparently I have Doc Brown back on the line. Do I? Yes. Uh, I can hear you. you. I can see you. Dan's video uh, is frozen, but I was hearing you fine, Dan. Okay. I'm not sure why you're frozen. Hmm. I'm not sure I should hang up on you and try again. I think we should just go ahead and continue with audio. We'll be good. We're moving on from inks. Yeah. Um. We had a, a special article go up this week um, by Marsha. She did a little shopping for us. She was looking for a Lamy Safari, 
a converter and some light blue ink and she went to five different retailers she went to gold spot Goulet pins, ISL pins, jet pins, and writer's block. And she did a little price comparison. And she found out that just jet pins was the most affordable. She could get the whole package for $39.50, while the Goulet's was the most expensive at $47.65. Um, and, and what contributed to that was jet pins has a, a really awesome offer for free shipping on orders over $25. So that certainly helped because you know what is shipping? It's usually like seven or eight bucks or something. Um, yeah. yeah. And then she so did. Uh, she went kind of above and beyond and took screenshots of all the shopping carts at the checkout, so that you could see the different options for shipping, how much they cost. Um, you know, I think it was just a really useful post, and I could get used to seeing some more of these. I I, I found it very useful myself. Uh, the free shipping for orders of twenty five dollars. It's really easy to get to twenty five dollars, yeah. uh, even though JetPens has some of the lowest prices as well. It's not just because it's not just that they give you free shipping. They also have great prices, uh, you know, if you happen to be looking for the products that they sell. Uh, so JetPens is a place that I have added to my list of places to look at when I'm going to make a purchase. What I found most fascinating was, Marcia, was, was however, Marsha's last name, Marsha Green. We now have Brian Gray, Stephen Brown, Marsha Green. We're going to have to open our own ink company very soon. <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll talk about a Brian. Gray. Yeah, that sounds. But what what is a Brian Gray? Is that a very dark gray or is it pretty <laughs> well, light? We're gonna have to ask Brian. Uh, this... What what is an oh, SBRE you... Brown? Very, very dark. I... Brian Gray ink seems like an ink you would write a very important document with, and then like a half hour later, <laughs> the ink just disappears. You're going to have to explain that in two weeks when he's on the show. Don't worry. I'll bring it back up. <laughs> I'd love to. Let's do it. Uh, so, so moving on, we got a new pin in the Jack Nicholas line from Curtis, Australia. Now, we've, we've talked about them before, um, but, but you really don't hear much or see much about this company, Curtis, Australia. Um, they make some very cool pins, though. I, I certainly like them. This is the second of five pins in the Jack Nicholas series. It's limited to you guys all know who Jack Nicholas is, yes. right? Okay. Oh, oh. no, he, he's yes. a golf player, right? He is. That's right. Uh, he's, he's a legend in in the golf world. Um, this pin celebrates his 1962 U.S. Open win, and the barrel decoration that's made out of sterling silver is of him finishing his swing as he's teeing off. Um, it's, it's very well done. I, I really like it. This pin is limited to a thousand pieces and it comes in, in two different resins, a jet black or a red and black kind of marbled looking resin. Um, I think it's a fantastic looking pin. It's available right now for $7.95. Um, what, what do you guys think of you this? You know, if, if I were into golf, this would be a pin I would have to have. Steven, I, I take it you aren't too much of a golf fan? Uh, how did you guess? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no. Actually, anything with... Actually, I never watch sports of any kind. But in any case, as to this pen, um, I, I, I think it's interesting. I think the, the colors, at least the, the, the picture that was on your website, that's the sort of burgundy red to black version. Mm -hmm. Um. I think that looks really cool. It's not necessarily a pen I, I would like to own because I think with the the, the center band with the, the golf player on it, that, that makes it look a bit like a cigar with one of those little bands around it. Um, but of course, when, when you're into you know golf, as Eric says, it's, it's clearly extremely cool. Um, one thing I was wondering about, which is probably a very stupid question, is why is there a gold bear on it? Is it uh, a golf thing? Jack Nicholas is referred to as the Golden Bear. This explains a lot. <laughs> okay, yeah, then I see the point. His nickname, uh, so. You say it comes yeah, in two right. different resins, Dan? Yeah, the, the jet black and then um, the red marble so Are they making 1,000 versions of each or 1,000 total? <laughs> you know, that's a good question. Um, I didn't see that specifically mentioned. I, I'm guessing it's 1,000 total. Well, they're going to have no problem finding 1,000 people to buy this pen. It's a very good-looking pen. And if you happen to like yeah. pens and you happen to like golf, it's a dangerous combination because you're going to have to buy this pen. 
<laughs> you know, I love golf. I, I used to play a lot of golf. I love watching it, especially on Sunday afternoons. In fact, the only thing better to put you to sleep <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon is NASCAR. NASCAR, yes. That's mesmerizing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you guys ready for a prototype? Yes, always. Yeah, me too. I found this. Um, Bryant Greer at Pen Time actually took these photos. Um, he got gave us a sneak peek at this prototype of a new Aurora pen called Dante's Inferno. Now they, this is kind of a a remake of another Dante pen that they've done before, and we we posted the old pen and this new prototype together at our website. And I mean, it it's a very minor update. Would you guys agree? Yes, I, well, I would say yeah. it's minor, but it's it's also cool, very cool. <laughs> it is it's very cool. Um, I I would have I don't know I don't know much about the history of this, but I would have liked to seen a a little more variation, you know, a, a little bit more differentiation in this new pen. But uh, you know, we got a sneak peek at a prototype. I love that. We really don't know anything as far as the details are concerned. I mean, all we got are pictures, but I'm fine with that. I know one thing, I'd like to have What's this that? pen. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a nice looking pen, very nice looking pen, and I don't know is go ahead. what I, I no 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 go on. <laughs> I interrupted you. Is this on. something that Aurora came up with by themselves? Do we know, or is was this uh, you know because Bryant sometimes gives them suggestions and and makes pens basically on on what his ideas are, and then he gets to sell them. Do we know anything about that? I, I well, don't. We're going to give credit to Bryant here then because we don't know. Because that's <laughs> he does that a lot. He's he's he does. He's, he's does in a lot good with all the manufacturers and and they'll make pens based on his suggestions. And he usually has very good suggestions. And I like this pen. Go ahead, Doc Brown. Well, I I what I was wondering about is I, I guess that's sort of related to to the fact that it's it's not really different from the previous uh, Dante pen. But I I thought you know if this is called the Inferno, then then what exactly makes it Inferno? I know there's now a little red band. I'm nitpicking now, right? Yes, just, but we just, like but, that um, about you. There's <laughs> okay. Well, okay. There's <laughs> there's a there's a red band near the end of the pen, but that's I guess like hell red. Uh, so that's 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 interesting. But then the only thing that actually refers to Dante is his portrait on top of the uh, cap. But that could also be Julius Caesar if you. Uh, it's got one of those laurel crowns. You could also call it the Julius Caesar. It would be. I mean, it's it's a multi-purpose pen, I guess. I, I would like to see if this is the Inferno that there was something referring to to Dante's Inferno on there. For example, you, you get this guy Gustave Doré who made some really nice etchings based on the the. Uh, poetry of, of Inferno, if, if that would be on the barrel, uh, then it would be probably a lot more expensive, but it, it would be awesome, and then it would really be an Inferno pen, because it really deals with this specific part of, of uh, Divine Comedy. Now I think it's, it's, it, it's, it, I think it's a gorgeous pen, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, I, I think it's, it's really nice, I just sort of miss the link to, to the actual Inferno. I, I'm not sure it's there either, and I don't like the pen because of, the, because they, of what they call it. I just like the aesthetics of the pen. Yeah, yeah, no, so do I. Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. Do you like the aesthetics of the pen? Yeah, it's all right. It doesn't, doesn't do anything for me. Okay, then I'll keep this one, and we can move on. Here's a, here's a pen that definitely Yeah, moving wants. on. Uh, okay. I wouldn't mind it. It's pretty nice, I think. Um, first of all, a huge thank you to Rocky for the thank translation. You, the dude stepped up. Yeah. Um, so in Japan, there's a special event called Konra Konraki, and it celebrates a person's 60th birthday. And the color red is a very important part of this celebration, which is why this pen is three different shades of red. And Sailor made this to celebrate the pen doctor Kawaguchi Akihiro's 60th birthday. Um, so that's the basis of the design for this pen. It's based off the Pro Gear, so it's going to measure 129 millimeters long, 18 millimeters in diameter. It's going to have their, you know, well-known 21 karat gold nib, and it's a CC filler. And the sad thing is, it's only available in Japan. But if you could get your hands on it, it'd be about 400 but, bucks. Uh, Rocky has volunteered to help people get one, haven't they? <laughs> um, well, see, you you have to have someone in Japan uh. order it. 
and then they ship it to you because they will only deliver inside Japan. They will only deliver inside Japan. But r- right. They won't ship what internationally. What is that all about? That's I, I don't is know. Is it a limited edition? Um, I, I didn't see any numbered limited edition. It, it might be a limited production or something, but um, I don't know. I, I, I imagine if you wanted it, you should order it oh, soon. Okay. So I know we have listeners in Japan. So if anyone in Japan would like to step up and offer to help anybody who wants to get this pen, get this pen, we're listening, right? You know, and, and that's actually a really good comment because we did have one comment on Facebook um, from someone who said who asked how they could order this. I sent them a link to the Japanese order page, and then I noticed at the bottom it did say uh, a Japanese only. So... Yeah, if someone could help out with that, that'd be awesome. Pen. Uh, I don't particularly have to have it, but I can see where there's there would be people who say I have to have that pen. It's it's one of those eye catching yeah, like red. Doc Brown, please Very jump in here anytime. Person. Yes, no, it's I think it's it's nice to have a, a somewhat more multicolored pen because a lot of pens, you know, this we got black and gold and black and gold and probably a lot more. And and there's I mean there's nothing wrong with that, but I do think this is nice. I particularly like the fact that it's not just a red pen, but it actually has a, a number of reds in there. Uh, yeah, uh, for me too. This is not something I would, I would, if I could, rush to the store and and buy it. Uh, but I, I, I do think it's nice that we we get some nice bright colors. That that looks it's, cool. It's cool looking and it, it's eye catching. As, as were many of the pens that Julio Kami shared with us this week. Oh my <laughs> gosh. She's wow. Got, Do I have a newfound respect oh, for Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, she's got quite a daily carry, doesn't she? Oh, my goodness. Like, she's got a Danny Trio Din Show with an extra fine flexible nib. She's got uh, Hakuman Urushi Kobo. This is the Ernest Shin Edison Pearl, which is pictured so right my now. my favorite. That's why um, it's pictured right now. <laughs> wow. Yeah. There's the Edison Pearl Custom. And She's got the, the pen that you this, want to buy from Sarge is also in her collection. Uh, <laughs> oh, you noticed that, did you? Yeah, that that one was oh, easy okay. to see. Um, <laughs> do, yeah, do we, we want to give, well, give it I away? Right? make a habit of giving it away on, on the podcast. So you called it the Danny Trio Genkai. Yes. And I don't actually know what the real name That's of this Nikai, is. Yeah, Piccolo. Okay, okay. But uh, yeah, because I, I, I knew when I saw that, I was like, wait a minute, where is that at? I was like, because that pin is massive. There's, and I didn't see that Danny Trio Ginkai up there. So, But yeah, they're, they're stunning pins. And then she also gave us a shot of um, her rotating daily carry pins. And I got to say, my favorite out of here was the Waterman 42 Absolutely. Safety. And, and do we know anything about how she got that pin? Um, was that featured it in her Sunday was. Shopper? Yeah, it was one of one our of first our Sunday first shoppers. First Sunday I shoppers, and she snagged it. She did. She actually, and she went ahead, and I think what she do, tweet at us or send a picture, set she, or left a comment. But basically, she said, "Hey, thanks for this. I picked it up. It's it's beautiful, and my goodness, it is it's beautiful. It is gorgeous. She got a good pen there. A, I wish we could go back in time, but you know, then I, I now that I know she has it, that's good. Didn't I say something that I wanted the pen, but I'm glad it's in the family, something like that." Yeah, and now yeah. it's, you know, pictured forever at the website. Doc Brown, jump in, please. Oh, yes, no, I, I thought it, this, I, I really don't have anything to add. It's, it's, it's a great, great collection. It, it looks really nice. Again, some, some really nice colored pens. And if, if anything, they, they made me feel more drawn to Edison pens once again, so I really have to look into that. So maybe oh, DC. Oh, you're going to see a lot of Edison pens at no. DC. Mm. Well, because Ernest, Ernest will be, will there, be right? there, right? Right next to Edison Penn. Oh my gosh! Yeah, you'll have to check out Ernest Arushi pens because they are so. The two beautiful. of them right next to each other is a deadly and expensive combination. <laughs> oh yeah, because you sit there, you talk to Brian, you say, "I want this," and then you talk to Ernest and say, "With this finish," and it's, it yeah, it's, it's dangerous, dangerous. But fun, so much fun, so much fun. <laughs> what else we got? So one sounds good. One thing you guys are going to have to do some research while at DC is on diplomat pens. Now they've added three new styles to their Excellence A line, and I'm certain they'll be at DC. So you'll have to check them out and let us know if they're any good. Um, what they've added 
is the Marrakesh rhombus. It's a combination of the what they call the Marrakesh brown finish, accented by laser engraving laid out in kind of like a, a grid look. Uh, this pin goes for $260 with a steel nib and $395 with a 14 karat gold nib. Then they also have what they call the Venezia, which is a silvery gray matte lacquer finish. Um, it actually looks pretty cool. I, I like the look of this pin. Steel nib, 260 gold, 395 And then they also have what's pictured here is the Roma, a black and white or a black and chrome checkered pattern pin. Um, this comes in a steel nib only, and it sells for three twenty-five. Now, their Excellence A line is supposed to be Diplomat's premium line of pens. You know, it's a it's a large pen of generous proportions, and they all feature a metal barrel with either gold plated or polished chrome fittings, and then multi layer lacquered finishes. Um, and like I said, some of them are available with steel nibs, or you can get a a two-tone 14 karat gold nib and they all come in fine medium and broad sizes doc brown so yes uh, i i i think they're all nice i don't own any diplomat pens so this is again something <laughs> i'll have to get into uh, i i like them all i think i actually like the uh, checkerboard black and white version least although I, it does have a certain appeal but I, I i don't yeah i don't know i just don't really like that i i like this this marrakesh i i like i've actually checked out that one a couple of times without the the grid on it just the the old regular marrakesh model mm -hmm. i think that brown is very nice um and then the 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 i think what was it the the venezia the, the like the the the, the gray yes. uh, pen i i think that's really cool and that just looks like it has a, a magnificent texture of, of some kind. Um, I think that's that's that looks really awesome. Yeah. My favorite is the Roma, the black and white checks. Although I would like that pattern to be continue on to the section. That would be. Then cool. it would be a pen I I could probably consider. Uh, as it is, I I don't like any of them actually enough to add it to my collection. But the caveat there is that I've never seen one in real life. Maybe. Maybe if I saw one at the DC Pen Show, well, don't be surprised if I go home with one. <laughs> you know how that happens. <laughs> right. You know, and it's hard to judge from pictures, but for the prices on these, it seems a little expensive for it what seems, you're getting. But like I said, that was my first impression is a little high in price for the pens in question. But I, as the best of my knowledge, I've never even held a diplomat pen. Right. Um, so we can't, can't say, say too, too much, much about it. Other than which ones are our favorites and apparently doc brown and i are not going to be arguing about pens or at least fighting <laughs> over them at the dc pen show <laughs> no that that should work out and otherwise we we i mean we we have pens if it comes down to hand-to-hand -hand yes, combat yes. We'll, we'll, you know it'll, it'll, it'll work, work out. out it'll work out <laughs> so are you guys haven't had enough sailor no, have you absolutely not can't get enough sailor okay and good. this is probably a pen that, um, that, that doc brown and i are going to argue over watch just watch ooh. Um, now, now this is, I don't think it's any secret that I'm a fan you of are? Sailor Fountain Pins. Uh, we, we certainly <laughs> give them enough coverage at the website. But, you know, one reason for that is because they release a lot of fountain pins that are for Japan only. And I, I, I at least want to know about those even if I can't get my hands on them. Um, thankfully, this new one, this Professional Gear Regency Stripe, isn't available only in Japan. We will be able to buy this. Um, well, actually, we can buy it right now. The cool thing I like about this is it has a rhodium stripe and barley corn pattern metal very barrel. Cool. I mean, it's very it's quite cool. a, yeah, it's quite a bit different than anything I've seen them do before. Um, it also has matching rhodium plated clip and barrel bands, or I'm sorry, cap bands, and it comes with their 21 karat rhodium plated nib. Standard nib options are fine, medium, broad, and zoom. But if you order it from nibs.com, you can get them in extra fine, fine, medium, medium fine, broad, music, and any one of Sailor's specialty oh, no. nibs. This is so, tempting. Yeah. Oh, it's just Dan, crazy. What's a zoom nib? Uh, is, that what is that what they're calling I, flex? No. I, I think... No, no, it's different. I think it's where if, if you hold the pen upright... 
it's it, it'll uh, write a very fine line, and then as you lay it down flatter, it'll write so a more, thicker line. The 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 lower the angle of the pen to the writing surface, the thicker the line. So I've never had much luck with that. This is a this is a zoom nib. Is, Steven, is, the, is is that correct? Is my description of that yeah, correct? It's, I think it's absolutely correct. Okay. This is the this is a, um, a Sailor nineteen eleven large, and the zoom nib it it. At first glance, it looks like a regular nib with a with a, a rounded ball. But if you if you have a good look at it, the ball actually has some some facets to it. And when you, I think the the steeper the angle, uh, the the narrower the line gets. So when you hold it like this, or even when you turn it upside down, you get a very fine line. And then uh, the more you go down like this, the the wider the line gets. And then it gets very wide. So actually, it 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 does sort of, I guess, give the idea of a flex pen because you get the line variation, but it's not a, a particularly flexy nib or, but or something like that. But the line variation, you don't, you don't get the variation with uh, by changing the pressure you're putting on the nib, you, by changing the angle that you're no, holding. No, you change it. the angle. And, uh, you yeah, you exactly. have one. That's, that's cool. Do you like it? And do you use it in a zoom fashion, or do you just pick an angle, uh, your usual angle, and write? Well, I... I don't dislike it, uh, and, <laughs> and actually, I, I, yeah, I do like it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, what's interesting is that you you get this line variation, but the problem with that is that if you happen to have a a fairly, uh, you know, an angle, I never know whether an angle is steep or not, but when you have an angle like this, you sort of hold it pretty low, pretty, you know, the, the feet kind of uh, parallel to the paper, and you get a really wide line. And I, I someone told me. Maybe Maya. I'm not sure. She she had one, and and uh, she had to get rid of it because the line was so wide because of her natural writing angle that it actually interfered with with the legibility of the, the writing. And I think that's that's kind of my experience too. Uh, apparently, I I seem to, I, I have fairly large handwriting, so for me it's not really an option. But if you don't, and you have a, a small hand, uh, then I think you you may be in trouble under specific angles, and that's I mean that it's it's nice that you can vary the line width, but I mean I don't think a lot of people no, write I like this. Write. So if you want a really fine line, then um, it's it's fascinating, and I'm I'm happy I got it because it is nice a nice nib to have, but it's not something I can use in, in every situation. Yeah, maybe some of Sailor's other specialty nibs would would be better on this pen, but this pen is gorgeous. <laughs> And yeah, absolutely. I, I would love to get one. It's just going to be a little too expensive for me. Um, MSRP on this is six ninety. You can get it from nibs dot com with any of the standard nibs for five hundred and fifty two dollars. Um, now, when you start optioning those specialty nibs, the price jumps very quickly. It is a piston filler. So yes. Just keep that in mind. Um, no, it's really? a CC. I was it's... expecting that to be well. Okay. Should we talk about something else then? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, a, a very important um, topic came up that I, I wanted to report on, and it's it's about fake pens. And I I may need to revise the the article because I don't think everyone's quite understanding what we're talking about here. Um, we're not talking about Chinese pens that are replicating the look of more expensive pens here. Um, what we're specifically talking about is a single individual who is basically creating forgeries of vintage Parker pens that are very uncommon, that are rare, and they sell for a lot of money. Now, he's, he's using some original parts in them, but he's also manufacturing um, caps, barrels. He's laser engraving um, the, the, the trademarks in there, you know, the, the dual-fold logo. He, he's adding first year date codes to Parker 51s I mean he's 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 found materials that match the the Nassau green 51 I mean these pins sell for five six eight nine hundred dollars and they're fake so and he's not he's obviously not saying that they're imitation they're reproductions no he's he's he says they're See, original the problem um yes he, he's he's created several uh, Mandarin yellow dual folds. And sold them um, as original. Uh, yeah, that's yes, not good. Absolutely. Um, he's he's creating bandless 
Parker dual folds, um, you know, Red Giants. I mean, these pins sell for thousands of dollars, and he's he's calling them original when they're clearly not. I mean, there was someone on, um, oh, I'm blanking on the name of the forum, but he he bought a Mandarin Yellow. It was like nine hundred bucks. The threads were immaculate on them. He says it's the sharpest threads he's ever seen. The pin is sixty or seventy years old. It's not gonna have razor sharp threads on it. I mean, the, the imprints, they're lasered on there. They're extremely clean, defined. I mean, that's not the heat stamp that Parker used when they manufactured the pen. So, you know, people, they just, uh, unless you have experience with these pens, they're not going to be able to pick this out. And eBay, they're, they're not doing nothing about it. You know, they don't care. So he's selling, he's selling so on eBay. Yeah, that, that's and, what he's doing. You know, it's, it's it's too bad he doesn't does he just doesn't come out and say these are reproductions. Well, exactly because if if he did that and you know maybe he added his his maker mark to the inside of the cap lip or something, or or maybe if he went the Ralph Prather route or um, Brad Torelli and just started making his own custom variation off this shape. I mean, Brad Torelli pens bring in a lot of money and they're beautiful so it, it, it's a shame to see him doing something like this and so we want to help spread that that word and and, and so and just get for it anyone listening it's an ebay seller and based where um in, in korea, korea. So you're gonna buy a vintage fountain pen from someone in korea take note make sure you're not buying from this person who apparently just changed his name his ebay name yeah it um it used to one be one thing and now it's another yeah go go look it up on the website because it's not really something you can pronounce um and i guess apparently he's changed it like five or six oh, or yeah. seven times That's wonderful i mean so no that's it's such a pity that i mean such if such a, apparently he's a great craftsman because he can he can make this stuff look look so real I mean, as you say, I mean, it, it, it should be possible to, to make money from that, too. I don't know, re- replacement parts, I know they, they won't be authentic, but, but you know, I, I'm, I'm sure there is a market for that somehow. It's a pity that he, he tries to do it this way. Well, yeah. Sorry, that was just a rant. Good for you. Doc yeah. Brown rented. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you're in the mood to talk, Doc Brown. Yes. Um, are we ready to move on, Dan? Let's talk yeah, about let's Encyclopedia. Is it Encyclopedia or Encyclopedia? Oh, yes. Well, I don't know. I would I would say Encyclopedia, right. but it's on your website, so it can be that anything you word. like. You can call it what you like, and I'll just follow suit. Yeah, that's true. Encyclopedia, um, okay. specifically Noodler's Apache Sunset. This went up at the website uh, a week and a half ago or so, but we saved it for the podcast until you could be here. Yeah, quite Thank welcome. you. This yes. was uh, you yeah, started so. this uh, this particular installment of Encyclopedia uh, by saying this is probably your most favorite ink ever or something like that. Well, it's definitely one of my favorites, yeah, because it's it uh, Noodler's uh, Apache Sunset has has such a, a beautiful shading, mm. and I I'm I'm actually not a huge fan of orange, yellowish inks because I don't know I just don't really like the color that much but with this ink it's just the shading is is so perfect from from in the right pen with the right paper it can really go from orange to dark red which is amazing uh, so i, I really think love it's the one ink. of the 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 best named inks it really does look like a sunset yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah that, that's that's great yeah that's, so that, that depends on the pen you're name. using too yeah. i've had it in a monteverde artista cristal uh, with a medium nib, uh, and it doesn't put enough ink on the paper to really see any of the lovely shading. You, you need something that's going to put some ink on the paper. Um, perhaps you'd like to... And a little flexi. Flex would it be, helps yeah. if, it's, if the, the flex, or at least some spring, then, then it, it really that, that brings out the shading very well, too. So uh, since we're talking about in- Encyclopedia for the first time, tell us what it is. The Encyclopedia is, uh, I think, going to be a fairly mammoth-sized uh, effort uh, in which uh, I, I just like to help 
people and give them an, an, an overview of a specific ink. So on my channel, I have a few videos in which I tell people, look, I got some new inks and these are particularly nice. Uh, but that's, that's a fairly short thing. So in the Ink Cyclopedia, that is exclusive to FP Geeks. I want um, to give a more in-depth overview of one specific ink at a time. So uh, what, what I do is I, I put one ink in a number of pens, so a fine nib, a medium, a broad, and a uh, flex nib, and an italic nib, um, and then I just use it. I, I, on the, the first installment, I just used Rhodia paper, and then people said, well, there should also be some cheap copier paper. That makes a lot of sense, so future installments, I'll, I'll do that too, uh, and hopefully that will just help people in, in getting an idea of, of what ink uh, what an ink is, is like uh, you know we, we do a number of tests waterproofness and and um, not really cotton swabbing but some other thing I think Dan I, I used a very wide uh, calligraphy nib and I think Dan came up with a uh, the, the six millimeter uh, pilot parallel nib and that makes a lot of sense because it's it's this this huge calligraphy nib is, is great, but it's it's uh, 15 millimeters, so that's so wide that it's extremely wet. I think that sample took like half an hour to dry. <laughs> and I'm not kidding; it was really half an hour. Uh, so that's that's insanely wet. Um, so the 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 uh, parallel makes makes I think would make for a good alternative. So we'll use that. Uh, that will, I I try to show whether the the uh, ink feathers whether it's easy. To, I will actually don't actually show that, but I, I discuss whether it's easy to clean from a pen. So you know it's it's and of course any input is welcome. If people want to see other things, it's it's you know we were doing this for you. So let One us know. One thing I uh, I didn't hear you mention. Maybe you did and I missed it. You're doing this on in video format. Yes, so this yes. is basically oh, yes. a, a yes. single so ink review uh, uh, in video format uh, in the SBRE Brown style, is what we should say, I suppose. Well, ac actually, I think it's SBRE Brown style and, and Dan Smith style, because Dan <laughs> is going to uh, uh, join in on this and, and will also uh, do this stuff, which is extremely well, you know, cool because we can cover a lot more inks with the two of us so i'm i'm just following your lead though um this is something you came up with i i loved it um right away and so i i wanted to help out because yeah there's just so many inks i know how time consuming this is um and so i wanted to help out but um l let's talk a little bit about the pins that you're going to use um so you're using the the noodler's flex for the flex yeah. pin right I think this is yeah. an excellent choice because it is so affordable and so many people can get their hands on it. So they know exactly what, what you're using because they have it. Um, in addition to that, you're using yeah, a, a Lamy Safari, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Safari, that, that was for the same reason. I, I tried to pick pens that – exactly what you just said. It, it, I, I, it would be ideal if these were pens that everyone has access to. And I think that the Noodler's uh, – indeed, the Noodler's Flex Pen, is, it's not that, that expensive. Uh, people can probably get that. And, and the Safari, I mean, sort of the same goes for the Safari. I think it's a, a great pen with an extremely smooth nib. I, I, I use that with the, the broad nib. Um, but that, too, is a very you know, accessible pen. And then, uh, yeah, and a, f a few of the other properties that we're going to explore that you had mentioned, um, definitely color, um, how it comes out from, you know, pens that flow differently, the shading, feathering, dry time, and, and waterproofness. So, yeah, I was very excited to hear about this project, and I, I can't wait to start testing some inks on my own, soon, too. isn't it, Dan? You've got, like, a pile of inks waiting, don't you? <laughs> oh, my <laughs> goodness. I actually, if you follow us on Twitter, you would have seen that I posted a picture of my ink wall. I had to add a new, uh, about a three and a half foot the long shelf, shelf to my wall. That retweeted, I don't know, across the universe. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was kind of popular. So, yeah, um, I've got a little bit of room to grow now, um, but I can't wait to fill that have up. Have you opened so. your Ackerman ink yet? Yes. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, I opened it as soon as I got it from you. Which um, it, it came. It darn came you from, for it came waiting so Stephen long to Brown. send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Stephen. It's it's a beautiful blue. I love it. Um, I, I as soon as I inked it and and was writing with it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. So yes, it's it's sitting front and center on my shelf. Um, it's gonna take me forever to empty that bottle, but you know it's gonna be fun trying. Yeah. 
That's a huge amount, and I, I, I seem to remember that these inks are actually produced by Diamine, so not by Akamon themselves, um, but still, I, I, I only have one, which is a, a red, it's called Chinatown Red, and it is, it is just that. It's, it's, when, you, when you think of Chinatown, you see these red banners and, and the, the, what do you call it, lampoons and then the stuff. Well, that's the color. They just got the color <laughs> right, and, and I was surprised, because a lot of reds are bit too dark or a bit too orangey to my liking but this this is fantastic so yeah i'm, I'm glad you it, it worked out and this was and a good i'm very lose. very happy with my yeah, brown i love I, I don't so much I, is it sbre brown i don't know what, what, what's the name of the brown <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just thinking the same thing that that's probably sbre brown you it's got. not really yeah. really brown it's not like havana brown or whatever it's called these days which was never an absolute brown oh that is the name of it anyway what do you think of the bottle dan did it spill all over the place i love it Oh no! It it didn't spill. Was there no ink in the neck of the bottle? Did you did you try to get the ink out of the neck, like I warned you, or did you just open it up? I I just it opened spill. it up. No, why would it? Well, spill? my my the neck of my bottle was full to overflowing because I didn't get any of the ink oh. out, which is you know hard to do. With that, it, mine mine was full, but it wasn't no, that full. I got an instant an instant idea of what my ink was going to look like, <laughs> on all sorts of things. I think I, I think there's a, a sort of sorry there's a ah, lot of noise there's um so this I'm I'm sorry people listening can't really see this but I'm holding up one of these bottles right now they have a long neck and a, a glass marble so you you turn it around and then the neck fills with ink and then you can just uh, the, the marble falls in place and it makes sure that the ink won't drop down from the neck again um, and then you you take off the cap you dip your pen and you fill it up and I think the easiest thing is to hold it almost horizontal but not quite and then the ink will flow back from the neck at some point yes. and then you can just see that's how to do it yeah, but i think you need well. to use up a bit of it and then it there will be the ink level in the bottle will be a bit lower and then it's easy to to get it out right again. i noticed it will get easier as the ink level of the bottle actually goes down uh, and that's what that's what, the only thing you can do is kind of hold it horizontal and and hope for the best and play with the bubbles actually <laughs> yeah. um Steven, I have a question for you. Now you're you're pretty close to where these to the source of these bottles, right? The ink. Yes. yes. Do you think he would sell just the bottles with no ink? Um, I have no idea. I seem to remember that at some point uh, there was a thing going on, and I wasn't involved in that. I someone told me this. I think at the Fountain Pen Network, but it could also have been in Canada at a local. Pen, well, anyway, there was this sort of thing going on that people were interested in the inks. And then I think that one guy said, I will order this, but I want to have all the bottles. So you will get the ink in a separate bottle, uh, but I, I keep the, the, the empty glass bottles. Um, mm. I... I, of course, that would be a bit weird because the ink, although it's nice, I mean, it's yeah. the bottle that, that makes it really special. Uh, I have no idea, but I can... I mean, in, informing about this, uh, you know, getting information is is super easy. So I can email or call these people if you like and ask them. It, it, it's no trouble at all. Well, because my thinking here was I have these 10 pretty generic bottles of organic <laughs> inks, and they're 110 milliliters. That, that would fill an Ackerman bottle quite nicely. Heck, if I could get 10 bottles of those, that would become my new favorite ink. I, just, I know, will make a note of this. And uh, I will I will inform because it it's 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 I have no idea but I will definitely ask. They're very communicative people there, so um, interesting idea. I'll let you just know to get the because yes, I like the ink. I like the ink that came in my bottle very much. But there's no question I like the bottle the most of, yeah. of probably yeah. of all oh. the bottles I've. <laughs> yeah, I like it more than the Hiroshizuku. Uh, there, I've said it. It's just. <gasps> <laughs> uh, what should we talk about now, Mr. Smith? We have got to talk about our latest All awesome right. review. Let's talk about our latest awesome review. Let's see if I can remember what pen Man. that was. You know, I love doing these things, but they are a lot of work. Uh, they are. A, a, yes, I have to agree. They're a lot of work. Uh, hopefully, uh, people like them. Hopefully, they they find them I helpful. Uh, yeah, I like good. them. I, I like them. <laughs> what was our last pen? The one, no, no. I was the Lamy Dialogue Three. 
Oh, oh I, I think uh, I I um uh, wait I, I I got one. Uh, wasn't it wasn't it the big Ooh, bulb? No, what's wait. He doing with, uh, on his, at, within arm's reach. Uh, and now it's uh, I, that was the dialogue yes, three, the right? Black Lamy dialogue three. Dan, you love this pen. I, unless that was I, a question. There was a little question I, mark on the end of that. <laughs> I really really like it. Um, it. It's a bit large, for even for me. It's large um, in uh, width, right? Yeah. Yes, in barrel and diameter. Um, so, so, and I didn't realize that. And if I had, I would have ordered it with like a broad nib that I could have stubbed, because w being such a large diameter pin, I don't have as much control over it. And I ordered it with an extra fine nib for cursive writing, and I. It just doesn't fit me that well. So I think if I would have ordered it with a broad nib that I could have stubbed, it would be perfect for when I write in all caps or for larger writing for, for signatures. Um, it would have been great then. But um, I really like it. The, the nib is phenomenally smooth for an extra fine. Um, I was super impressed with it. Uh, what, what did you think of it? Um, I think it's a cool pen, uh, but I don't need it. It's, it's too heavy. Uh, first of all, and too wide. I could use it easily, uh, and it's kind of fun to use for a couple of sentences, but that road trip where we write for 21 minutes, this pen nearly killed me because it's just too heavy <laughs> and too wide. And, yeah, you like to use fine and extra fine for your daily writing, correct? Yeah, because most of the time I write in cursive. Right. Uh, so I can see how a, a broad nib on this pen would be better because you wouldn't be necessarily writing for 21 minutes with a broad nib um and it's cool there's there's no question it's cool you twist it and out comes the nib the design is really beautiful very modern uh, as i said however in and I'll, I'll i'll just say it again uh in the review I, I don't think there's anything about this pen that's worth an msrp of 375 dollars except you know the coolness which unfortunately kind of wears off after a while yeah and I mean, even what street price is 300. like three hundred. I mean, there's, and even before the price increase, it was two forty, and I and I didn't want to buy it at that point. And the only reason I did was because it was jumping to three hundred. I mean, yeah, you know, it it, it was a tough sell at two forty. I really can't recommend anyone buy it brand new, um, unless you. Well, the thing I said, get your hands on one first. Because that's, yeah, that's the best yeah, one. Because I absolutely. really like the pen in the videos that you see of them. and Because you know, it's really cool. Uh, and then you have yeah, it, it, and is. the coolness kind of goes away. It, it, it doesn't become uncool. It's just not as cool as it was in your imagination. And then it's hard to write with because it's heavy and it's... I mean, I never thought I'd find a pen that was too wide to write with. But this is it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what my favorite part of it what? is? You can actually feel it like... Two or maybe three times from a J or Band bottle. Oh, yeah. 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 If you're going to talk about those <laughs> bottles again. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just, talking just about sure. those bottles, if I if I may may jump in here again uh, <laughs> for a second, ha have you ever considered just filling the converter from one of those bottles? Because that works just fine. Uh, yes, that's a possibility. Yeah. What I generally do is but, I, the the problem is if uh, obviously a piston filling pen where you actually have to put the nib in there but if i don't yeah. have that then sure. whatever i have i generally take a syringe pull the ink out of the bottle and put it where i need it to go yeah steven how dare you bring logic into this we were ranting <laughs> no and actually actually logic. no no yeah, yeah absolutely logic. true and I, I i really don't uh, uh <laughs> wait, wait, wait. i hate logic. logic and and dog and brown there was something about using the vac 700 twisby vac 700 and a twisby ink pot and creating oh. Shall I tell you something interesting? I I uh, I have my my traveling inkwell right here. Uh, actually, this I I think like twenty minutes before I hooked up with you guys, I tried it again. I tried to I, I did a replication experiment uh, where I I filled the the ink well with water and put the vac seven hundred in, and I pointed it well away from me, and I I drew the vacuum, and nothing happened. Nothing. I mean, it just filled with ink. So I have no idea why the first time this was <sighs> launched because like that. Because you pulled the vacuum back before you attached the ink well to the pen. Then you were you had 
Yeah, you I had know. two I, vacuums I and everything. you were trying to fit I, them I, both into one one universe. Maybe that's it. You know what? Because I right now I have the the Vac 700. I just inked it up, so I'm not going to replicate it here. But next time I am here, I will do anything to turn this into well, a all rocket. All you have to do okay, is so pull the, the pull the vacuum the back I'm, and then attach it to that, and then you've got an air gun, is what you've got. Yeah, possibly, but I think I actually did that. But it, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll, I'll try this again. You want to see me get all wet and <laughs> yeah, water yeah, everywhere? Try it with water. I understand. And so we'll I, get back to your paint gun um, as soon as we're are we finished with the Lamy the Lamy dialogue three, Mr. Smith. Yes, it's I a nice pen. So. Uh, in case people didn't know it, you purchased the pen and then uh, you lent it to me for the review, and now it's back with you, and uh, I Correct. don't miss it. It wasn't a pen that I, w convenience wise, it's kind of nice to just twist and start writing, but it's not as convenient as Vanishing Point. Oh, absolutely not. And, you know, I mean, if if there's a pen that I've got to sell, you know, to, to raise some quick cash, I mean, <laughs> that's going to be close to the top of my list. I mean, there, there's a lot of other pens that I, I like a lot more, but, but it, it it's is cool, cool. And it you know? is well so, made. You'd, you'd say it's well made, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Great tolerances, great, great well-made pen uh when you twist one way to open to extend the nib uh it obviously the barrel stops when it gets to the end i had trouble closing it because i would always go too far because there's no way to, it doesn't stop there's there's a right. little bit of indication as to the feel but i always went too far and then i started opening the pen and that you know you close the pen every time you stop using it, it isn't something that you're only going to do <laughs> once or twice uh i never got used to that but it's a very well-made pen, and if you like that, I mean, I can't think of another twist pen. Um, well, Pilot makes the capless Fermo that twist, but the, the twist knob is, is at the very end. It's about the same length as what the, the push knob would be on the regular capless. Oh, oh, no, they just get a, a vanishing point, the, the click kind. The click I kind. agree. Yeah, I like the click kind. So I got four of them. So... Do we, do we have anything in the mailbag? We, we, the only thing we've been getting in the mailbag, if we're talking about snail mail, uh, has been for our current giveaway, the Franklin Christoph desk pen. Franklin Christoph, by the way, Doc Brown, uh, will be at the DC Pen Show, and you'll get to see all of the pens that they make as well. Ah, good. Sounds good. Um, I, it sounds like I'm going to have to bring a suitcase of money or something. <laughs> yes, it's uh, that you'll empty out and fill with pens. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Um, we did get an email that um, really it really hit me. Um, it, it's from Han, and he says, "I love that you guys are hosting these free pen giveaways." It really shows me how highly these pen manufacturers think of you and your site, as they should. For the last two months, for the Edison one and now for the Franklin Kristoff one, I've been getting together with my sisters and cousins making cards so that we can enter the contest. It's been great getting together with my family to make these cards. I think I look forward to it more than the actual contest. It's a great way to bond with them and to show them the various fountain pens I have. I'm still hoping they get more involved with the ho hobby. Thanks again, Han. You know that I didn't even think that something like that would happen. You know, to, to me, we, we're just getting these pins. We're, we're giving them away. You know, and, and that's really as far as I thought it would go. But this, you know, getting together with family and people, actually, actually spending quality time with them, getting them into the hobby, that's just awesome. Props to you. And I'm, I'm glad this email came in because it explains why we get several of these very similar but not quite identical looks like handmade cards from the same city all on the same day i'm going hmm so either you know either there's a group of people getting together and doing this in mass or uh, somebody's trying to get a lot of you know entries in there uh, making up all these different names uh, so I'm, I'm glad we got the email <laughs> because that explains exactly why this is happening and now it makes me enjoy these even more knowing what's going on behind the scenes uh, and 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 going off of that um, you recently sent me all the entries for our Macarta giveaway, which was, was some time ago, and I've been reading through a few of these every night, and they are just Aren't awesome. They? They're just wonderful. Um, I, I love them. I, I love seeing people's handwriting, reading their notes, and some of them are extensive notes. Um, it, it's just 
awesome to read that stuff. So, so thank you everyone for for sending those in. Um, it really means a lot to us reading that. And we for this month, so. uh, today's the fourteenth, so we still got at least two weeks to go for this month. The giveaway pen is a Franklin Christoph uh, Model sixty six desk pen. Uh, to enter, you just have to send something to us handwritten, and somewhere on it, you have to write. What do I have to write, Dan? Franklin Christoph rocks. Rocks. Um, and I'll give you the address uh, at the end of the broadcast. Plus, you can always find it at the website. Recent acquisitions. Who's been getting what? Well, Eric, let's start, start with, with you. I, I what have, have you got? The only thing I received this week uh, is something that's not even for me. It's the Edison Pen. Uh, oh, Dan, your video's back. Good. Nice to see you again. Yes. But now you're frozen awesome. again. Shouldn't have said a word. Anyway, I got the Edison pen that is going to uh, our Edison pen giveaway winner, uh, Jason, in Greece. Uh, it's going to stay with me until he tells me he's back at home and ready to receive it. Um, it, it went from okay. Brian Gray to Greg Minuskin, who did the grind, and now it's in my possession. Uh, Jason has told me I can use it. Uh, so far, I have resisted. But I don't know if I'll be able to resist. It depends on how long I have to keep it. <laughs> Dan? So I'm actually waiting for the postman to knock on my door because he's supposed to be bringing me the entire set of Pilot Parallel Ooh, Pens. You, all four? Oh, all four. You're in trouble. <laughs> well, I've never used them, and I couldn't decide on just one. I mean, obviously, I had to get the 6 millimeter for the Encyclopedia, but... I had to try them all. Yeah, that's so. what I did. I got all four. I got all four. That, and I also got a package from UPS from Namiki. I sent in a capless faceted um, pen to get repaired. The, the push button on the end had a hole in it, and they repaired it free of charge, shipped it back, and I now have it. It's beautiful. I love it. Thank you, Namiki. Cool. To send it to Namiki, where did you have to send it? I said it's a pilot okay. first. Well, you've had a fun week. And, uh, not only that, but you got all the entries for the um, the McCarter giveaway. You got mm -hmm. four inks from me. You got the ink, the Ackerman ink from Doc Brown. I can't remember. Oh, you got your Dialogue Three back. You've had, you've had a good week. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it was fun opening up that package. Stephen Brown. Yeah. How about you? Recent acquisitions. Yes, a few interesting things. Uh, I, I guess I, I will start with the the least spectacular one. Uh, I, I got a a pilot blue mix. I don't know whether you know this pen. Um, this is not particularly expensive. I think I paid about eleven dollars or something. Um, and to my surprise, it I, it came with fine or medium nib. So I, I picked the medium, and it's actually an italic nib. It's just. Uh, Italic, it's flat. Uh, sort of you, the the Pilot 78G. I got that with a broad, uh, and that uh, was also italic. Um, and um, so I I was surprised that it it actually uh, it came with that. I didn't expect that with a, a pen of this price level. Um, can you guys still yes, hear me? Because yeah. I cannot. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. No, because I, I, I was getting a bit of feedback just now. Okay, fine. Um, so I, I think it's kind of nice. It it has some some interesting features. First of all, this, this barrel, I don't know how well you can see this. If I bring it too close, my camera can't focus, but at least you can see there's a sort of a bulge yes. here, which is where your hand goes. Um, and it's, it's actually very comfortable to hold. It's a bit hard because it's all plastic, uh, but I kind of like that. Now, it, an interesting bit is that it has this very small cap. Hmm. So you, you, you just, it, it, it's, it's different, and it looks a bit like a, a, a torpedo or something, and because it has these fins here. Um, and the one issue with this is that every time I unscrew it, I just unscrew hmm. the barrel. Uh, but apart from that, it's like fascinating. Like a dialogue. Um, Three. <laughs> yes, something, <laughs> something like that. And then I got a Faber-Castell Hondoro. <gasps> Which is a uh, oh. a, a, a six sided wow. pen, this is a uh, which I think is, is interesting. Yeah, I I this is my third Faber Castell pen. They they all have nibs that are very similar and they are extremely smooth. I, I I'm, want I'm one really of those so bad. Yeah, it's it, it's great. And I I it, it was uh, on sale. Uh, I think from uh, where? At, 
from La Couronne du Comte in uh, the Netherlands. Uh, but they ship worldwide, so that should work out. Um, and and then uh, they're down the street from you, though, right? So I you, got you it. You just walk over there and <laughs> say, "Hey, I want that pen." Well, I'll mention you on the I'm air, so much give me all the, the pen, way right? South. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, anyway, I, I, I do like it. It comes in in orange and black. So the, the the fun thing about this is that, as I said, that the barrel is is sort of six sided. That's hexagonal, right? Um, so you got it in in black or orange, uh, and it's it's just very nice. Now I think. What's even more interesting is that I got, with that pen, for free, a nice little notebook by a brand I, I hadn't heard of before. Maybe you have. It's mm. from Italy, and I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's something like Chiak, so C-I-A-K. Um, Chak, I don't know. Never heard That's of what it. I would say. Hmm. No? Nope, no, well, apparently they use, uh, like, recycled materials and stuff. So it actually has a leather, it's real leather, real leather cover, and then it has paper that doesn't feel like it's extremely heavy but it is not thin either so it's i i haven't tried it, it it's I, I actually like the look so much with a little uh, rubber band that i thought i have to find some kind of a, a purpose for this but it looks, looks kind of like cool back pocket, uh, um, notebook yeah it, i i guess and it's it's sort of that that size so it's thick, it's, maybe. it's nice the paper yeah it is <clears throat> yeah that's that's uh, i i don't mind that but it's it's cool the the paper is is pretty white and it actually has a fairly, I thought it was a bit of a distressing warning in the end. It says, the paper of this book contains recycled past consumer, post -consumer. no, wait, even worse, recycled post consumer waste <laughs> fibers. That that po that sounds like someone <laughs> ate it, then vomited it out, and they made a booklet of it or something. I'm not, I'm not sure that, but in any case, that's, that's interesting. Um, but I think actually the most interesting thing I got, sorry for this extremely long build up, um, <laughs> Is, is this pen, which is pretty big, as you can see. Uh, I don't think I've ever pointed that out, but I have fairly well, large hands. Uh, on our show, uh, I don't think you have. Uh, and it's so, so from the tip of that to that, it's about 8 inches. And so is this pen. So it's an 8-inch pen, uh, which, which means it's, it's very long. It's about 20 centimeters. Now, what's, what's the trick here? The trick is that you just take off the cap and you get a, a nib, which looks pretty normal. Actually, it's marked Iridium Point Germany, so you may think, hmm. Actually, I thought it was pretty smooth. Now, what's the, the, the fun? The fun is you cannot post this pen, so it doesn't, it doesn't post, but it has this huge sort of blind cap, and you can take that off, and then you get another nib. So you got two nibs and one pen. Interesting. <laughs> what? And the, the joy of that is that you cannot use a converter or anything. It only takes, I have to be a little careful because these cartridges will fall out. It uses the standard international short cartridge and the pen is by italics uh, and it's called the teacher. So what you're supposed to do is put something like blue in one end and then red in another end. You can carry two different inks and you can you know, use one for grading student work or whatever and the other for regular writing. Now I, I thought wow. that was pretty fascinating. And it's it, the, the um, uh, Mr. Ford, the, the owner of the shop right I bought it said, well, I hope you like it because it's a bit like writing with a telephone pole. And if, if I hold it, you probably see the, the he was absolutely right. It's, what it's what a bit top-heavy. What if you take the other cap off, And it's though. very long. Is it still... Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's, that's what I did. And then it's, it's, it's really nicely balanced and very pleasant to use. The only thing is, of course, this will dry out well, a bit. But, you well, know. You, uh, you should switch. Switch every other <laughs> every other letter. And that way the nibble. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, I did that in someone's letter, and I, I, they probably think I'm crazy now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, because prior Many to doing that, they had no uh, reason to believe you might be crazy. <laughs> no, not at all. No, no, no. I'm such a normal human being. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So if you're looking for a, a weird pen, then, then consider the italics the teacher. Italics teacher. Italics, I-T-A-L-I-X, cool. italics. And where do you get that yes. pen? I got this, I think, actually, there is only, I, I think, there's only one retailer who sells this brand, and that's mrpen.co.uk. mrpen.co.uk. Uh, Mr. Very good, very good. And then there, yes. But there are other italics, uh, not just the teacher, because you have a Parsons that you use in Ink yeah, Cyclopedia. Yeah, the, the, exactly, the, the Parsons Essential, which I like. I think that nib is... I, I got an italic nib on that, and I think it's just a bit smoother uh, than the nib on, on this pen. But, of course, it's just one, and this pen has two. Uh, you can only get this pen in a medium nib. 
So there is no medium variation possible. That's medium on both sides, possible. I suppose. <laughs> it's medium on both sides. But I actually uh, 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 fooled around a bit with it, and I was able to put the... Well, was it was able, sounds like it's a terrible operation. I could put the uh, uh, Parsons Essential nib on this pen, but I haven't inked it up, so maybe it will leak. I'm not sure, but it seemed to fit. So if you have uh, you know, too much money, you don't know what to do, you could buy a teacher and two Parsons Essentials and two different grinds, and then you put them <laughs> on there, and it may work. You know, that's you one way to posted. do it. You keep us posted. Um, I will. What do you say, Dan? Uh, you feel like giving away some ink samples? Yeah, I think oh, it's about time. Geek Challenge. We'll do the same thing we did last week. Last week we gave away, was it five 10 milliliter ink samples? You've got, you've got a treasure trove of ink samples. Is that correct, Mr. Smith? And so I we'll do. give away. Each vial is about 10 milliliters. That's a, a very good sized sample. Um, and you'll just. So not not all of them are. I mean, if, if some very few specific colors are only about half full. Right, so for the majority, five most to of them are full. Milliliters, and you just pick five random colors uh, to give away as samples. Yep. And uh, we've got true or false statements, question type things at the ready. Uh, the same thing we did last week. It worked well, so we'll do it again this week. I'll take caller number three if you'd like to play the Geek Challenge. Um, I'll, I'll actually mute myself, gentlemen, so you two can entertain each other and the audience while I try to get caller number three on the air. Uh, Are you going to give the I'm phone going number? To, as soon as I'm ready for people to call. Unless, would you oh, like okay, to? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> no, I was just wondering. Make no, sure you didn't Please call it. now. 909-647-5056. Uh, operators are standing by. I will take caller number three. 909-647-5056. Gentlemen, you have the floor. All right. So, Dan, you, you do a lot of, of nib grinding yourself because you said something just a while back about getting, I think, a, a broad or something and, and turning it into a stub. You, you do that a lot? Yeah. Um, now it's, it's mostly just been my own pins. Um, in the past, I was actually offering my services for others. Um, and I, I got a lot of, lot of people send their pins to me. Um, I love doing the work, but, you know, now I, I just don't have that much time and I, I don't like to make people wait four or five or six weeks to get their pen back. And, and so I just kind of stopped advertising it. Um, I do have a few um, very good customers who, who insist, you know, that I, I do their nibs. So, of course, I'll do it for them. And, and you know, I make it a priority. But, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, hard to find the time to, to squeeze it in now. So mostly I just grind my own nibs. I can imagine. That sounds interesting. I, I mean, I've, I've, I've never really looked into that. Just sort of do the occasional smoothing a bit, but that's, that's about it. But it sounds cool. So if you, if you have customers actually asking you to do this, then you must be doing a good job, which is, which is very, very cool, I think. Yeah, is um, I had a buddy who's a moderator at FPN, and um, he, he wrote with one of my very first samples, and he's like, Wow, dude, this is incredible. You know, this is awesome. So, um, I, I kind of advertised it a little bit. You know, people sent me their stuff. They loved it. A l word kind of got out. Um, and, and then, like I said, I just kind of stopped advertising. But it, it's a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy it. And you can do that on any nib, or do you need specific materials or, or pens or? No, anything really. Um, what are you talking about? Oh, just, just oh, grinding nibs. Grinding. We uh, didn't reach to caller number three. We had only one caller, so we're calling it a day. We're going to have to save the questions for next week and the ink samples. How's that sound? All right. Were you two in the middle of some good. conversation nope. that we have to finish now? All right. Nope. Then nope. I will I remind so. everyone how they can contact us. We are available via email at podcast at fpgeeks.com. You can call us, 415-685-GEEK. That's 415-685-4335. We are on Twitter, twitter.com slash fpgeeks. We are on Facebook, facebook.com slash fpgeeks. We have a website, fpgeeks.com. We also have a forum, fpgeeks.com slash forum. You can mail us, snail mail, Fountain Pen Geeks, P.O. Box 499, Highland, California, 92346. Anything else, gentlemen? That's all I got. That's all I have, too. Yep. Stephen Brown, so, thank you very much for joining us again. Um, what time welcome. is it? 5, 6, 30? It's 6, 6.30 6, p.m. PM. Yes. Um, and today is Saturday. Uh, we, we, never got to we never got to talk about your, your going uh, 
paintballing last weekend. We'll save that for another time. Uh, any any big plans for tomorrow? <laughs> uh, well, I was. Oh, do do we still have a few people in the chat, or no? Dan? Has everyone left? There's a few, yeah. Okay, okay, so I I was thinking actually tomorrow I might do another encyclopedia entry. Um, so I I made a short list of inks, and I thought because I, I cannot just tell people which ink should I do because then I'll get a million different requests. So I may I, I picked five inks, and perhaps people in the chat can comment on this. And if if we don't reach consensus, then I guess I'll pick one. But I I have. Uh, Gerbin Lit de Thé, which is a, a nice brown. Yes, that one. Stop there. Brown. Do that one. It's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorites too. So I'm, I'm leading you know, that towards Ackerman, that. If, if it's not going to be this brown one. You sent me. Yep. It's pretty close to that, isn't it? It's, a, it's probably is lighter. It? Go ahead. What's the next one? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the next one is Mont Blanc Burgundy Red. Do, you, do any of no, you have skip that? that one. What's the next one? Nope. A burgundy red is actually interesting because it's like writing with yes, red wine. Nobody has it. If when nobody it dries, has it, it's, it's like, not interesting. No, unless you're trying to make no, us buy true. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you might consider that because it's 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 not a very um, saturated red, but as I said, it's like wine. It's it's burgundy. It's it's like you know, a, okay. a shaded right. wine. It's interesting. Okay. Then I have Waterman Florida Blue, which is something Ooh. a lot of people use Classic. because it's it's exactly it's it maybe not the most spectacular ink out there, but it's extremely well behaved. It's widely available. I I like it. And then we have Diamine Twilight, which is an interestingly shaded uh, blue mm. that actually uh, goes towards gray a bit. I may actually have it looks like this, something like that. So. Um, that's uh, that's a fascinating bluish gray, I guess. And then I thought maybe I should throw in Ackermann Chinatown Red, which is my Ackermann ink. I know that mm -hmm. is not widely available, but maybe people Diamine. will be interested. Diamond Twilight so, Blue. That's my vote. Dan, what do you vote for? We have I one I vote. would go for the J. Urban Lightathe, and I think the chat has kind of agreed with that. Oh, they, okay. they seem... It's something I can't verify. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it actually it, it looks to be a tie between the J Urban and the Ackerman. So oh, well, I would go with the Urban because Ackerman is kind of hard to get, uh, unless you want to yeah, start yeah, shipping. Yeah, that, well, actually, they will ship over here. I I have had an email with them in the past, and yep. it's just kind of expensive. That's all. It is, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's the issue because they, uh, I mean, they they communicate well. I think they recently updated their web shop, so you can you can find it. You have to beware because there are two Ackermans, one in Amsterdam and one in the Hague, and only the one in the Hague actually sells this. Uh, so oh. if you email the wrong shop, then they simply won't have it. And uh, uh, yeah, so. Um, but that, that sounds good. Then I think we will go for Lee Dete now, and then maybe Twilight after that, just to satisfy Eric. <laughs> you sent me a sample. Uh, I actually Ackerman. have some. So. I, That's true. No, but I mean that—that that is a very yeah, nice ink. Nice. So I, I'm not sure whether it's the most well-known ink. No, but and it's what very I like nice, most so. about it is this, you can't just say it's a blue ink. It it has all that gray in it too. And since I'm kind yeah. of looking for a gray ink that is actually legible, uh, that's that's yeah. a very nice. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a very nice ink. But yeah, go for the. I think the, it's an app. It's it's an app name because it is like Twilight. It's not really yes, blue. It's not really gray. It's named so, ink. Very good. Very good. Now yeah. we'll, we'll find out about this Urban, if that's also uh, aptly named. Gentlemen, we should call it a day. All righty, sounds Mr. good. Smith, thank you for being here. Doc Brown, thank you for thank being you. here. We'll see you all around. My pleasure. Uh, I don't know if you're going to get on the show again before the DC Pen Show. Uh, maybe. We haven't actually talked about that. But if not, I'll see you firsthand, live and in person, at the DC Pen Show. Good night, everybody. You've been listening to Eric and Dan on Fountain Pen Radio, a weekly podcast produced by FPGeeks.com. Thanks for listening. But the fun is far from over as the site is constantly buzzing with new content. So until next week, thanks for coming out. Good night.